Hello, I'm Erin Bauer and I'm an Extension Associate in the Pesticide Safety Education Program Office at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about the three C's of spill management. And by knowing the three C's, that will help protect you and the environment from pesticide spills. So the three C's stand for control, contain, and clean up. And I'm gonna talk about each of these uh, individually. So by controlling, the first step is basically if you've had something happen like a pesticide container overturning and spilling, it's basically upturning that container to prevent the spill from continuing to spread. Your second C is contain. And basically what this does is to prevent the spill from spreading out any further into your location. So what you would do here is use an absorbent material such as kitty litter that you may have in your facility or something like a um, absorbent pillow or snake to basically uh, absorb up that, that pesticide. Now while you're doing these activities, you wanna make sure that you follow the label for what it tells you for protective uh, clothing to wear while you're doing both the application of pesticides and in the case of a spill. So some of the things that you may see on most labels would be wearing long sleeves and long pants. And then also oftentimes um, you'll see uh, wearing chemical resistant gloves. And here's some, a couple examples here, disposable or reusable gloves. And these happen to be nitrile gloves. You may also want to wear uh, chemical resistant boots depending on the extent of your spill and if there's a chance that your shoes could get um, saturated from the spill while you're cleaning it up. And also maybe a protective coverall might also be um, needed. Now all of these uh, personal protective equipment should be contained within a spill kit that you keep within your facility. And your spill kit could either be in a small, smaller bag like this or a bigger drum, depending on the size of your uh, storage facility. So that brings us to the last um, C, which is cleanup. And basically with that, it's just you use your absorbent material to clean or to uh, absorb the spill. And then you just need to use something like a shovel to clean that up, scoop that up, and put it in either like a plastic drum or a plastic bag, depending again on how large the spill is. So by using um, these guidelines for the three C's, that again will help you um, to protect yourself and the environment and any non-targets from pesticide spills. Improper pesticide storage can be hazardous to human health and the environment. Follow these guidelines for storing pesticides safely and securely. Store pesticides in locked, well-ventilated locations away from water, such as lakes or streams. Post danger signs and secure your building to keep unauthorized people out. Buy only what you need and don't stockpile. Always use your oldest pesticides first. Keep an inventory of stored pesticide products as this will help in your decision making. Store pesticides in their original containers and out of reach of children. So this means do not put them into things like soda containers or things like that that children might be attracted to. Store other materials such as food, feed, or supplies separately from where pesticides are stored so that these items do not get contaminated from pesticides. Keep and follow all of your pesticide labels as these can indicate temperature requirements or storage requirements for the pesticides. Make sure that your storage facility is kept neat and has sturdy shelves, metal works really well, and that they don't leak. Put liquid and more toxic pesticides on lower shelves as this will help in case there's a spill. So for instance, we have a skull and crossbones poison um, labeled pesticide here that's on the bottom floor. So if that would spill, it wouldn't go very far. Also, you want to keep like your granular uh, pesticides. Those can be kept higher up and then your liquid pesticides on a lower shelf. By following these guidelines, you will be able to protect yourself and the environment from pesticide spills. You may not
not always think about disposal, but it is a very important. Rinse and disposal of pesticides and pesticide containers um, information can be found on the label directions. For pesticide containers um, containing liquid uh, pesticide, you can either triple rinse or pressure rinse. Triple rinsing uh, procedure is where you rinse out pesticide containers three times to remove any excess pesticide that's in the container. Where pressure rinsing uses a pressure rinser, which has a spearheaded nozzle that's attached to a water hose to power rinse the residue from the inside of the pesticide container. When you're doing this, you want to always use an anti-siphon device. Then you will end up with a rinsate that should always be applied to a targeted site that's listed on the label. For more um, in-depth details about rinsing techniques, you can see the NEB Guide Rinsing Pesticide Containers or other publications on the Extension website. Now, Nebraska does not have a statewide waste or excess pesticide disposal program. An example of, ex of statewide waste would be something you would clean up from the spill, um, such as the absorbed material that you keep in a disposal drum. So you have two options for disposal. You can either hold on to the products and hope that Nebraska will, at some point in the future, have a disposal program, but you also need to store these products properly during that time. You also can pay for disposal yourself. The Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality provides a list of several commercial firms that you can consult about disposal of waste and excess pesticides. See the Pesticide Safety Education Program website under Environmental Protection for this list. Remember that disposal is a part of your overall um, pesticide management program, which also includes spill management, application, and storage.